There's a lot of reasons why certain areas of our lawn can turn brown and turn yellow and, and just not look very good. And there's an easy way to diagnose it and find out what exactly the problem is. So usually we've got either stress, insects, or disease that can cause our lawn to turn yellow and have yellow spots showing up. And a lot of times we just assume that it's insects and we treat for insects and doesn't clear it up. And so what you really have to do is get out there and, and dig into the soil, find out what's going on, check the root system, and actually you know, get an accurate diagnosis for what's going on. So first thing I do is put my handy dandy wonder gloves on. Got some really nice gloves that are easy to work with, have good flexibility and dexterity. And then I pull out either my pocket knife or a sod cutting tool like this, and I go to one of the better looking spots. So if I'm going to someone's home to try and check their lawn for problems, I'll go to one of the best spots first, not the damaged area first, and we'll cut a little sample out. So usually I'll take my knife and I'll cut down in, you know, maybe a six by six inch square and pull that piece of sod out and take a look at it. And as you can see, this area has been watered fairly recently, probably even, if not last night, this morning. And so this is digging into the soil quite easily. And I should be able to pull this sample up without any trouble. So, if we take a look at that cross section, there's very little thatch. The soil is nice and moist all the way down through. And you can see the root system of the of the grass down at least three inches, and I think it's going to go even deeper than that. And so, you know, this isn't the the most beautiful piece of grass, but you can tell it's getting plenty of water, and uh, the soil's nice and soft, and it, it it falls apart. It's not real heavy clay, and uh, we can see good root system there. So I like to compare a good sample to a bad sample, so we have something to. To, to reference so we know what the grass really should be looking like and then we can help hopefully identify what's going on. If, if our, our other sample is showing some different conditions then we can actually tell whether it's insects or disease or just even stress really quickly by looking at a good sample first and then going and taking a look at a bad sample next. So I'm going to put that piece of sod back in there and we're going to move to uh, a location that's not as good looking and see if we can figure out what the problem is. Now this spot doesn't look nearly as nice as the other grass that we just looked at just a few feet away and uh, what we're really looking for is if the soil has the same moisture consistency all the way through we know this area is getting plenty of water. We really want to check and see if that soil is compacted down so maybe the water is not penetrating in very well because the grass is very thin through here compared to the last sample that we checked. And so it could be insects, it could be disease, or it could be just not get enough water. And so we've got to do the same thing that we did in our first location here and find out what's going on. So we'll cut that same size sample. The soil is definitely harder here. So in the first spot, I was able to push the trowel down really easily into the soil. And here there's there's moisture that's getting down in there but it's a much harder soil and so it's it's a lot more compacted and my sod knife just doesn't want to cut down into the soil very well so I think that's probably what the problem is if you're trying to diagnose for insects what we would find when we pulled that sample back is we'd find little insects in there nibbling away so white grubs look look just like this on the on the bag of the grub free zone white grubs are probably about an inch to an inch and a half long. They've got three legs on both sides of their body. They're white with red heads. And when you pull a sample up like this, you'll actually find them down there in the soil. And so by cutting this piece of sod and digging it up, hopefully we can identify what's going on with the, with the grass here. So it has pretty good root system. And, the, and it doesn't like pull up really easily. I had to really cut into it and I had to pry it to get it to come up. If you've had insect damage, you would be able to pull that piece out very, very easily, just as if it were a piece of new carpet that you just laid down there. And by pulling this back, we'd be able to, we'd be able to find the insects in there nibbling and, and doing some damage. So we'd actually locate the insects and the soil would come up really easily. But since the soil didn't come up easily, we probably don't have any insects in there 
there. And so then we'd be looking at possibly a moisture problem. And the soil's moist in here, probably equally as moist as the area down there, but it's really hard and compacted. I had a hard time getting down into it. So that may be the problem. The other problem is we could have a little bit of a fungus. Uh, if you've eliminated water and you've eliminated insects as being a possibility of having done the damage, the only thing that's left is, is a disease. And uh, the F-stop is a, is a very, very good fungicide that will help stop diseases from spreading, get the grass to recuperate and come back in a shorter amount of time. And the F-stop really does a great job at uh, preventing as well as curing any, uh, any, any diseases that may be damaging the lawn. So it's very important to get out there and uh, dig into the soil, see how much moisture there is, see if there's any insects, and if necessary, treat for a fungus and try and get that lawn looking good again.